Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me already then my name is Sarah and I'm a flower farmer in East Yorkshire in the UK and I have had lots of projects going on at the moment and it has been kind of overwhelming but a couple of them have either been completed or are near completion so I just wanted to show you one of those projects today which is my new germination chamber and this is actually germination chamber 2.0 because the first one um, didn't really work. I kind of tried to do it really cheaply and easily and with just a bit more effort it works a lot better now. So now that I've tried and tested the new germination chamber um, I want to tell you all about it in this video. So the germination chamber basically provides uh, heat and humidity needed for seedling uh, germination and it doesn't have any lights in it because we're just looking for the heat and humidity initially to trigger germination and then once we see those little seedlings germinating then we bring them out into the light and they can carry on growing on as seedlings and the benefit of this is that it kind of creates the ultimate um, seedling um, condition seed starting conditions um, so we're able to get the seedlings to germinate really quickly quicker than would happen in my cold greenhouse at the moment so if you are in the UK then you know that we've been through a cold snap in the last week or two and we've been getting down to kind of like minus five um minus three like zero degrees for the last couple of weeks so it's really helped for me to have this it actually only started working uh, last week so I quickly chucked some seedlings in there before the weekend and I've got lots of trays that are on the go now which would normally have taken much longer in the greenhouse and would potentially have rotted away before they've even had chance to germinate so I'm really excited about this new germination chamber I think it's really going to help especially when the weather's not exactly um, the way we want it to be for germination. So my original design was basically just some OSB board that was taped together um, that had a shelving unit on the inside and in the bottom it had a trough with water and a fish tank heater. And this is the upgraded version. We've put OSB board around the edge um, and it's still got insulation on the inside and we've just bungee corded it shut for now. You could have put, we could have put hinges on it, but that kind of helps to keep it quite sealed. Um, as you can see, we, we are getting some condensation that runs away down here, um, but I haven't lost too much water so far. So it seems to be working really well. So when you open it up, you get the steam and the heat rising and it's uh, quite satisfying to feel that heat and and steam coming out um it's quite empty at the moment because i have taken a lot out since friday and it's wednesday now i've just taken these things out here um i wonder if i can show you some of the germination the stage that i'm taking it out because um the seedlings are obviously still quite small this is a tray of helichrysum um you can see a seedling there so it's still got the seed on it and it's just germinated. That one's looking a little bit leggy, but we can sort that out. Um, so we're taking them out at a very early stage of germination and then we're putting them into the light so that they can continue with their normal growth pattern. Um, and at the moment here, yesterday I sowed some uh, poppies and I've put them in here. Uh, and also some delphiniums. So I don't know if you've watched my video before, the delphiniums. Um, in the past, I've started them off on tissue paper in a Tupperware tray and um, put them in a dark cupboard. And I thought the germination chamber might be a great place to start them off. So I've sewn them in trays and I've left them in here. Uh, and then there's also some oregano there as well. So it's, it's working really well and I'm really pleased with that. I'll show you some of my other trays that I've got going on in the workshop. But as you can see, this is um, a freestanding unit, so I can take this out if I want to. And it's all um, boarded in with Kingspan or s some kind of similar uh, insulation board. And then I've got a polystyrene box here, which is what the boxes that I use in my worm room. And then I've got a fish tank heater in the bottom. I probably need to clean that water out because it's looking a bit gross. And that's actually set at 38 degrees and it gets it up to about 100% humidity and 22-ish um, degrees in there. But I keep having to bring this out because when it gets too wet, 
um, it stops working. But now it's at 12.5 because I've had it open for quite a while. But I'll come, I'll come back later once it's been shut for a while and I'll show you what, what temperature it gets up to. So my original design was basically just insulated foam board that was taped together with gaffer tape and the freestanding shelving unit was inside. But the, um, the seal on the tape between the boards wasn't good enough and there was a lot of heat and humidity being lost and it wasn't very airtight. So that kind of didn't work. And also it wasn't mouse proof. So there was quite, some quite large gaps in it where mice got in and took all of my first um, attempts at putting some seeds into the germination chamber. So luckily, um, Rob came and helped, came to the rescue and uh, we went and got some OSB board, backed it with insulation and then just basically stuck all of those together um, with some um, supporting corner pieces and things like that. So it's worked a lot better than it did <laughs> the first version. I did actually see a few people online that had just used a taped together insulation board, but it just didn't work for me. So we've had to kind of up our game a little bit, but... I think it still cost me less than £100 to make. If you had um, board and things lying around, then it would be even cheaper, obviously. Um, and yeah, it's been a good little investment so far and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. So this is everything that has germinated in the germination chamber in the last four days. And as you can see, there's plenty here. There's a couple of things that I want to point out that um, I have sort of learned from my mistakes for the first time round. And that is um, putting different varieties of things into the germination chamber. So for example, here, I've got Ami, uh, Ami Majus, Ami Visnaga and Dorcas. And I was kind of treating these as similar or same varieties. Um, and the Ami Magus has germinated. You can see one there, but the Dorcas hasn't. So they've obviously got varying um, germination times or something's happened with the Dorcas that didn't, ha that something's happened with the Ami that didn't happen with the Dorcas. So I've had to bring it out because obviously this is gonna just um, grow very leggy without any light in the germination chamber. So this is gonna have to germinate in the cooler temperatures now. And hopefully um, that's going to continue to germinate. If not, then we will um, see about trying it again. And then here we have some Limonium suwawarii. And this, these little red ones are weeds, I think, so I'm pulling them out. Um, these hadn't even germinated yesterday and I've just looked in this morning and they are looking a little bit leggy, but hopefully they will recover just fine. Um, and then Helichrysum here, I've kind of had a bit of an issue with that as well um, because the white one is germinating fine. The silvery rose, I think some of that's germinated, some of it hasn't. Um, and where else? Uh, the white one's germinated here, but the mixed, no, salmon rose hasn't germinated here. So I think it would be worth just sowing a whole batch of the of the same variety, even if it's the same species, but a different kind of um, variety, different color, it's worth sowing them in their own individual trays just because I've obviously had to pull that out because of this, um, this batch here. And then here I've got Phlox, which is the perfect thing really to start in a germination chamber because it likes to germinate in the dark. So we've got some germination going on here which is cool we've got phlox whipped cream phlox alba and we've got some phlox up here as well some creme brulee so we've got a full tray of that you can see i'm trying to pull them out when i see the first few um cells around 50 percent of them germinating and the rest should be on their way i've also got here some grasses and they've been done in soil blocks, which is interesting. Um, I did kind of accidentally bash those ones so they f fell apart. And then I have here some nigella, which hasn't germinated, and some scabious um, ping pong, which has germinated. Some of it has, some of it hasn't. And then we have some limonium, some more status. Um, so I've got two trays of that. I 
can't actually see where the other one is. There it is. Um, and actually, I put these in on a Friday, and I actually went on holiday <laughs> until the Monday. So these probably went stayed in for a bit longer than they should have done, and I kind of had to poke some of them back in like so, just to to get them rooted a little bit deeper into the, into the compost because I don't want them to get too leggy. So as you can see, overall, the germination chamber has been a success. Um, a couple of things that I've already mentioned, which is the fact that some of them germinate at a different rate than others. So I would definitely recommend sowing the species or the same variety in one tray only. Um, and the other thing is that I've kind of moved them out of the worm room, which is where the germination chamber is. And there's lots of trays in here now, and there isn't actually really adequate light in here either. So I need, them, need to move them over to my greenhouse, but I need to come up with a different efficient way of moving things backwards and forwards, because that was one of my big issues that I had, uh, I've had for the last few years, which is moving seed trays backwards and forwards. So I need to come up with a solution, um, either a big trolley or some kind of seed tray transporting system that's just going to allow me to pack all of these seeds up and move them out to my greenhouse. I think I'm most excited about those delphiniums. I'm really looking forward to seeing whether that works in there. Um, and I've just put some asparagus in there because I've sowed a lot. I've sowed probably about uh, 60 seeds and I have put some in a really bright space. It does say on the seed packet to put them somewhere bright, but between 21 and 30 degrees. And I don't have anywhere that's 21 and 30 degrees here in a greenhouse so what i have done is put some in the the germination chamber and they have the temperature but not the light so we'll have to see which one does best i um i love doing those type of experiments so that's going to be interesting to see and yeah the delphiniums are going to be really lovely hopefully we can get those going usually i always manage to get them to to germinate and then i get them potted on but then i don't ever have anywhere to plant them so now that i've got my new field hopefully we can have lots of delphiniums growing in there next season and that's going to be a really nice thing to have so thanks so much for watching guys i hope you have been inspired by my germination chamber maybe if you are you are struggling for space and heat yourself then maybe a germination chamber might be a good idea i definitely think you could scale it down as well as probably scaling it up so um i'll keep you updated on the progress of the germination chamber and i'll see you on the next one thanks for watching don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it